Because recently there was a merger among the black banks, Broadway Financial and CF Bank, that's City First Bank, combined to create the largest black bank in the United States with a combined asset total of over $1 billion. So we're joined now by Brian Argret, President and CEO of City First Bank. Brian will also be the CEO of the new combined institution. So Brian, $1 billion in combined assets, that's huge, particularly among the Black banks. I want to know how much uh, this is going to help serve, better serve, rather, underserved and underbanked communities, which are typically minority communities in the United States. Well, Kristen, first of all, thank you. Uh, pleasure to be on, uh, be on the show. Uh, we, we believe it's going to help uh, uh, communities of color and low and moderate income communities significantly. What we're doing, it's a merger of equals where we're bringing together two uh, uh, community development financial institutions that are well positioned, healthy, uh, and we're bringing them together to really double down on, our, on just the question you asked, our ability uh, to increase the flow of critical capital in capital gaps that exist uh, initially in Washington, D.C. Uh, area where City First Bank is located and in Los Angeles, California, where Broadway is located, and then ultimately uh, beyond that. All right, so I want to know if you can tell us a little bit about your expansion plans, if there's going to be a lot more banks of this combined institution that we are going to be seeing, particularly in those minority communities. Well, I think you've seen consolidation in banking more generally over the last years, uh, certainly in the community banking space, certainly also in the larger banking space. So I think there's some degree of additional consolidation that may happen. For our part, this is a transaction that we looked at and, and started putting together more than a year ago, pre-pandemic, uh, really thinking about what, what could we do strategically to really increase the flow of capital to uh, affordable housing, to small business, uh, and of course, in support of nonprofits. Uh, and so that strategic, uh, those strategic rationales made perfect sense then. Once we hit the pandemic, of course, this became even more important uh, in our service. I'm wondering if in this moment that we've been seeing lately of social reckoning, if you've seen an increased interest in banking black, that was a hashtag that I had seen uh, circulating on social media. If you're seeing more and more customers walking through your doors that are saying, you know what, I want to put my money instead of at Chase or, you know, Citibank, I want to put it inside of a black led bank. Yes, absolutely. I think the, the combination of the pandemic uh, the economic conditions uh, that we're currently under, and in most importantly, uh, the social unrest, the awakening, uh, and the recognition around how economic justice is also a component part of that has really led to interest in how do I support, how do I invest alongside, how do I multiply the impact of dollars in the black community, in communities of color, and more generally in low and moderate income communities. So yes, we are definitely seeing increased interest. So to that point, I'm, I'm wondering if you can comment a little bit about really the importance of this merger um, and just the importance of, of a movement like that, of banking black, or banking black, excuse me, when you have just this quick stat, right? So you guys now have one billion or over a billion in combined assets, but just in contrast, JP Morgan, for example, has nearly three trillion dollars. I mean, how is a bank like yours, how are black banks supposed to compete or do they even need to? Well, we occupy a really important and unique space. And, and as you were alluding to earlier, that's even more important now uh, than it ever has been. So part of the importance of black banks, of community development, financial institutions uh, and the like is that they're rooted in the community with an explicit purpose of trying to close those capital access gaps. Well, while other banks may have that interests uh, tangentially for time to time, depending on the economic conditions, depending on the business strategy, they may not be there. And what's really important is that sustained long-term effort of investing in your community. As you know, community development, economic development doesn't happen overnight. It really requires intention. It requires discipline in how you execute on it, and it requires capital. Uh, and so, yes, while uh, the combined institution will, be, will have substantially more, it's still not going to be enough. And so we'll continue to try and grow the platform, hope that others do the same, uh, so that we can really address the systemic issue. 